Good morning, folks. Bit of a double-edged sword with the sun here today. We've got more from the solar orbiters, a bombshell about Mars, and the solar control of Earth. We are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and the double edge is this. The sun did not elevate its flaring levels at all yesterday. No bigger flares in the least. But the sunspots have not decayed either. In fact, their silence was caused by their interaction and the tilt of the central sunspot group. We've actually got even more flare potential building there during the brief bit of flaring silence. And of course, those sunspots are surrounded by the filaments and the coronal hole. It's like the sun got a bit shy at the exact hour we all focused on it yesterday morning, but still holds cards close to the vest and is actually a bit more dangerous for flaring than it was yesterday morning. Solar wind remains elevated due to the last coronal hole stream, moderate in all ways with minor movement only on the KP index below as we wait a couple more days for the next stream. Folks, the first data from the solar orbiter is in. Turns out it's just an okay dust detector. They were able to confirm the slightly higher amount of dust in the innermost system, but were unable to peg exactly what was interstellar dust. In fact, they say they're missing a lot of it. And that ties directly back into the Parker Solar Probe results as well. Now they have moved on to the switchbacks in the magnetic field elements of the solar wind, but they have already determined the corona is dustier than it should be. That quote, by the way, is one of the team members from Johns Hopkins. And this comes after they've already discovered interplanetary space in the solar system was dustier. In case you forget, the dust arrival signals the core portion of the galactic current sheet as it's acted like a static Swiffer duster sweeping through space. The dust has arrived. We're off next to Mars, and we're focused on the USA-sized feature known as Valles Marineris. This feature was scoped for water content and, wow, a huge signature dead center, right in the middle, right where it wouldn't be if a flow of water carved the feature. That's where it would be if this was indeed the electric scarring of a major discharge. For those who like the evidence that the modeled magnetar burst works for smaller scales as well, and this is probably the perfect signature of the event. No, we can't go back in time and watch that event unfold, but we do know what we would expect with water carving and what we would expect with discharge carving. Here, the central signature likely denotes the strike point of the bolt, and this is what happens with electricity. It's one of Billy's best fields of plasma science in our lab. Water will go to the current, violently, stick to its position, walk with it, and can even defy gravity in the presence of that electricity. Lastly, we are coming back to the sun, and this is the level of obvious that climate-forcing scientists really need to swallow. When the plasma interacts with the magnetic field, it drives bulk plasma bursts and electric current. Those electric currents are also noticeable in the ionosphere in the instantly forced connected system, and simultaneously, that rapid effect, the magnetic field at ground level and the electric currents begin to surge. This is one of the mechanisms for that rapid, instantaneous solar-forcing scenario of the ground level condition and it's what climate scientists really need to know. And speaking of that over longer time scales, this paper is yet another that we've seen in this vein many times. These Ice Age trigger papers combine with the solar forcing of Heinrich events and Dansgaard Oeschger events to have us suggesting it's the sun triggering the polar changes that bring heat and then major cold. This paper, literally says high solar forcing affected the polar region, which led to the mini ice age's first half beginning portion about 600 years ago. And when it's the Arctic or the Antarctic, doesn't matter. Taking ice locked at the poles and melting it into the ocean does not heat the planet. It cools it tremendously. And yes, there are major cold climate bombs ticking away down south as well. We greatly appreciate your support. Watch the playlist, folks. Honestly, 90% of all your comment questions are answered there. The links are right under the video. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.